Let's go and speak to Mubasha Lukman. He is a prominent Pakistani journalist, and he joins us now from Lahore in Pakistan. Mubasha, thank you so much for joining us on I-24 News. Uh, let me ask you. Thank you for having me. First of all, let me ask you, like I said, speculation about that other country unnamed. Uh, what are you hearing uh, or speculating in Pakistan? And also, why do you think Imran Khan went public with these comments? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. And I can tell you one thing that I have no doubt in my analysis that the other country he's talking about is Saudi Arabia and no one else. You see, there are only four countries that have said this. One is the United States, second is Israel, third is India, and fourth is Saudi Arabia. There is no fifth country that has that kind of influence over us. So we are not on talking terms with Israel, officially at least, and we don't like, uh, we don't get along with the Indians. So it's very simple. You know, it is Saudi Arabia once uh, uh, the United States is named. And I think there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of pressure on Imran Khan, and right now Pakistan is the center of gravity. And whether we like it or not, Pakistan first spoke about making another block, uh, which was not very, which didn't go very well with the Saudis, basically, which includes Malaysia, which includes Iran, which includes Turkey, which includes Pakistan. And obviously, that was the first uh, nail in the coffin. And then came uh, Prime Minister's statement that we are totally in the Chinese lap and not the American lap. And then our differences with Saudi Arabia. And that's an open secret now. Saudi Arabia tried to arm twist us on three occasions in the past two months, and none of that has worked. In the past 60 years, Saudi Arabia has sort of looked at Pakistan at, um, as its subordinate country, and they've sort of dictated Pakistan. But this time, things are changing. The global geopolitical uh, situation is changing. The politics in the region is changing. The influences are changing. So Saudi alone is not the only influencer in Pakistan. And I asked this question specifically to Prime Minister Imran Khan myself, and I'm telling you on record. I asked him about a year back, much before United Arab Emirates and Israel signed a pact, much before that. And I said, and I, and I was of the opinion, I said, we should be friends with Israel, or we should have some kind of understanding with them. And Prime Minister came out very strongly and vehemently, and he told me, no, nothing doing. Uh, until and unless the Palestinian issue is solved, we cannot have a handshake with the state of Israel. And that is what he told me. And there were many other journalists over there at that time. I wasn't the only one over them. And now this changing uh, scenario, because we believe uh, that MBS is under tremendous pressure in his own country. And he cannot accept Israel the way he has promised or committed to. And he needs a lot of Muslim countries to do that before Saudi Arabia. And Pakistan has a very strong presence in the region. Pakistan, contrary to popular belief, um, contrary to what many people in Saudi Arabia or Israel may think, but Pakistan is a nuclear country. It's the only Muslim country which is a nuclear country. Pakistan has a regimented army of 800,000 people. It is the fourth or the fifth best army in the world. Pakistan has a very strong defense system. Pakistan has a very strong geopolitical right. uh, strategic importance. So Pakistan cannot be subservient to another country and hence are no to Saudi Arabia. It is as simple as that. But let, let me give you maybe another uh, argument for uh, Pakistan establishing ties with Israel. Surely you've seen there the developing of this relationship between India and Israel and the benefits it's brought to Indian trade in defense. How are those being viewed in Pakistan? And it, it, could that be a factor in, uh, in this equation? A major factor. You see, uh, I, I, I have to be honest with you about one thing. And I, I hate to say it, because I have many friends across the border, many friends in India. Uh, but Pakistan and India, they're centric. Pakistan is India-centric and India is Pakistan-centric. And anybody who's a real friend of India, we, we sort of look at them with a lot of skepticism and with a lot of question marks. Now, Israel and India are not only cooperating in agriculture or in commerce. They're cooperating in defense. They're cooperating in missile technology. They're cooperating in aviation technology. And we believe that all of that is going to be used on us or against us at any given time. 
So we are very, very uh, um, threatened about that. So of course, um, if you want, I mean, Pakistan to be open to Saudi Arabia or Israel or anyone for that matter, you must have a leverage uh, between us and India. You have to treat us uh, equally. You can't create an imbalance. And of course, we look at that with a lot of skepticism. We don't like uh, how Israel and India are cooperating, especially in defense. If you were only restricted to agriculture or trade and commerce, that is fine. That is between two countries. But that defense, that armament is used against Pakistan. It is not used against any other country. That's how we look at it. Right. Mubash, I have to ask you, many Pakistani journalists would even decline to appear and speak with me, speaking with from our studio in Tel Aviv. I'm curious about your personal perspective on the possibility uh, of uh, Israel-Pakistan relations on some level or the other. I was a minister in uh, Parvez Musharraf's cabinet as well, and I am one of those people who have believed from that time that Pakistan should be friends with everyone, that we should revisit our foreign policy, and we should think of Pakistan first and whoever is important to us, and we should stop fighting other people's fights and wars. So I am one of those people who believe that we should shake hands and we should have diplomatic ties. There's no issue about that. But there's a majority of the people who do not agree with me, in fact, who look down upon me because of my, my uh, opinion. But having said that, you must understand one thing. Israel is not a dream, it's a reality. It's a very important country. It is a very, very vibrant country. Um, you, uh, the Israeli nation is a great nation. I have no, no doubts about that. In their own way, they are fighters, they are survivors. And Pakistan is a great country as well. Pakistan is a surviving country. And Pakistan, in its own right, has many accolades. So I think if Israel and Pakistan ever, ever have to shake hands, it cannot be due to a third party. It must be directly. We don't need to be subservient to anyone, be it United States, be it Saudi Arabia, be it anyone for that matter. So when the time comes, if the time comes, I think both of us can do it directly. Right. Uh, I, we're only about 30 seconds. Uh, are there others? How many others in Pakistan, even maybe in some official circles, might share that view and maybe not make it public as you do? The problem is that when a child is born, it doesn't mean the mischief happened the night before. It takes a whole lot of nine months. You see, the animosity between Israel and Pakistan has existed for almost seven decades now. Um, I mean, I can do an anti-Israel show in Pakistan, and I can promise you it will be number one on the TRPs. There is no doubt about that. Instantly, I'll be a hero. And you can do a show which is anti-Pakistan, and I'm sure you know, you'll be uh, a very important person over there immediately, far as TRPs is concerned. So for 70 years, the people of Pakistan have no knowledge of people of Israel or the state of Israel, except that, you know, it is a Zionist state and that it is carrying out whatever it is doing against the Palestinians. And I'm sure it is mutual in Israel as well. Israelis don't know Pakistan right. and what are our fears and apprehensions. So I'm, I'm, if, if at all it has to come, if it has to progress from here, we have to start educating our masses. We have to start enlightening our public. But there is one point I want to make. Very quickly, Do I know there's a I'm afraid yes. we, I'm afraid we are running out of time, uh, Mubasha. But I I do want to take this opportunity to hope that we'll continue this uh, discussion, and I hope we can have this conversation in our studio here in Tel Aviv. I I look forward to hosting you, Mubasha Lukman from uh, Pakistan. Thank you for joining us on I24 News.